welcome to day six of the seven rules of adept english um, our free course uh, you know the format there's an email and you've linked through to this video there's also an mp3 file and a pdf file now just to recap rule one talked about the importance of understanding understanding first before anything else Number two, rule two, talked about practicing, repeating listening until you gain that understanding. And rule three said stick at it, make it part of your schedule. Rule four of Adept English says uh, be nice to yourself, don't be critical of yourself, learning is a gradual process. And rule five talks about the power of learning grammar and vocabulary within context and nothing but English. The explanation is also in English. So today we come to rule six, and this is really about how Adept English can give you a helping hand. So it gives you opportunity to listen to a material which has been specifically written for English language learners. Now, when I tried to learn French, tried to improve my French, I remember finding it really difficult to um, come across material online that was suitable. Um, most of the French was either too slow and too simple or really fast and there was no transcript to help me. Um, so in French there's lots of elision, lots of things that are contracted and the same in English. So there's often quite a difference between the way languages are taught and what you hear in the country, what you hear native speakers say. So in English, you might know, I am going to go and do this. But a real English speaker might say, I'm going to go and do this. Um, so you've got to get used to listening to the second version. When, again with my French, I found it a whole lot easier to understand Parisian French. So French as spoken by people who come from Paris. Um, obviously not everybody comes from Paris and accents vary. And it's no different in the UK. Um, so there's accents and there's dialect. So ways of speaking that are um, from a particular area of the country. and. Um, also there's slang as well. So um, bear in mind, say on accent, even people in the UK from different parts of the UK may have some difficulty understanding each other. So it can be quite difficult. So I think this is a topic worth focusing on and worth covering. Um, other things that I include in rule six of helping hand. Um, so material specifically for people who are intermediate, they have a good understanding of English and a good vocabulary already, but they want to move to fluency. So um, Adept English, it's slowed down slightly. Most of the time I remember to speak more slowly and more clearly than I might usually. Apologies, sometimes I get excited about my subject and I might be speaking more quickly, which makes it more difficult to understand. But on the courses, we gradually speed it up. And the way that I'm speaking to you now is not at all um, unlike how I might speak to a member of my family. Um, the helping hand also gives help with parts of English which might be confusing. Now, and sometimes it's illogical, sometimes it doesn't make sense even to us English speaking people. Now don't be downhearted when I say that, don't be discouraged. Every language has its difficult bits and its easier bits and English is just the same. So for example, French and German are the two other languages that I know. Now in French and German you have to learn the gender of the noun, so everything's masculine or feminine. Um, in English, you don't have to bother with any of this. If it's masculine or male and it's breathing and alive, then it's he. If it's feminine or female and alive, it's she. Everything else is an it, um, aside from storms and ships occasionally. But that's a simple rule. Similarly in English, adjectives are much easier. So describing words, red, green, big, little, small, large, 
um, they're always the same, they don't change. So it's a big girl, it's three big dogs, it's a big house, it's a big idea. It doesn't matter. Those parts of English are much more simple and more complicated in some other languages. So we focus on some of the difficult bits. I've already mentioned um, the way we contract. I'm going to go and do it, as opposed to I am going to go and do it. Um, another example might be word order. So if we're talking about oh, something like this here, this is off my daughter's desk, um, a little red book. You wouldn't say in English a red little book. Well, you might, but it would sound odd to a native English speaker. So, a little red book. But if you said a little interesting book, that would sound odd too. So we would say an interesting little book. Um, it's not logical, but that is the way we would expect to hear it. A little red book, but an interesting little book. Um, and only by hearing these things lots of times will you naturally say it the way a native English speaker would. You won't, kind, you won't find this kind of thing in a dictionary. Um, another example, and this is quite a common one, we use a lot of idioms in English. So, for example, we might say, oh, she's barking up the wrong tree. You might hear that and think, what is this? A woman who's barking, really? Um, what we actually mean here is that she's got she's got the wrong end of the stick there's another one she's misunderstood she's got the wrong idea she's incorrect in what she's thinking um, if you think of the picture associated with this idiom so you imagine a dog chasing a cat and the cat runs away and it runs up a tree and the dog is standing at the bottom barking but it's barking up the wrong tree it's got the wrong idea so because we use so many idioms in English, I think it's um, useful to have some language learning that's dedicated to that. You probably have them in your own language, but we really seem to like them a lot in English. Um, another example, um, there are lots of words in English that look the same written down and sound the same even, or, are said, or sound slightly different sometimes, but have different meanings. So something like present. So present might mean a gift, like a birthday present or a gift, a Christmas present. It may also mean um, here and now, right now, like the present tense, it's happening right now. Um, or it could mean you're present in that place, you were there, um, you, were, you were present and correct. There's also a verb to present. So I guess what I'm doing now is making a presentation to you, I am presenting. So there's probably even more meanings than that, but there's four meanings of present or present. Um, so Adept English aims to give you help with those kinds of things. We're nearly at the end now. Don't forget the other rules and don't forget to listen to rule six at least five times. Um, bear in mind the helping hand and we're also fairly interactive at Adept English. So if you um, connect with us on Facebook or Twitter and you have a, re a question about English, something that's been puzzling you, we are on hand to answer questions. Um, so again, much better than looking it up in a dictionary. Have a lovely day and I hope you will join me for Rule 7 tomorrow. Goodbye.